Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Schmidt and welcome to Genetics. We're continuing our series of revisiting Mendel, again in the sense of wondering when we see aberrant results, or at least those that seem odd, um, does this mean that there's a problem with Mendel's laws, or how are we going to interpret this so that they are consonant with his laws and explain the apparent discrepancy? So this session is a little shorter than some others. It really addresses the phenomenon of lethal alleles, and I wanted to put the idea of pleiotropy in there as well. So let's see what this is all about. It turns out that we're going to see the definition of a lethal allele, but I want to explain to you the experiment that uh, led to the discovery of this. In mice, there are two alleles that exist at one of the loci that controls coat color. Now, coat color in mice is actually a little more complicated than we've let on. But this is the same locus that we were talking about in a previous video that had to do with being a goody versus black, etc. So uh, an allele was discovered that was actually dominant to a goody, and they called it capital A, capital Y to give the idea that it was dominant. Now, it caused a yellow coat color, at least this is the preliminary story, and it turned out that if they took two yellow mice every time, no matter what, two yellow mice, cross them together, what you see is a strange two to one ratio of yellow to non-yellow. It turns out that the non-yellow is a goody colored. But a two to one ratio, guys, it's certainly not three to one. There's no way to make, which is why I put this separate, there's no way to think of a two to one ratio in the context of nine to three to three to one. It, it really just doesn't work. Um, no way I can see. So what is the explanation? Well, it turns out that all yellow mice are heterozygous, meaning they have one capital A, capital Y, and one regular capital A. You would think under normal circumstances that it, a yellow mouse could be capital AY, capital AY, but we're going to see that that's not possible. But first, let's look at the experiment. So the idea was, after doing some preliminary stuff, I mean, it's sort of uh, a little backwards the way we're thinking about it, but the fact is all yellow mice, yellow mice are heterozygous, but how did we determine that? So if they took a pure breeding agouti line like this and crossed it with the yellow mice, always what they saw was that you got 50% yellow and 50% agouti. We know that this parent can only contribute the big A allele, right? So what that means is uh, the other parent would have to be contributing the big A Y half of the time and big A the other half of the time. So every yellow mouse that was in existence when they crossed it like this, they always got the 50-50 ratio, which implies strongly that the yellow mouse is in fact heterozygous for this A Y mutation uh, and the regular Goody allele. So what is going on here if that's the case? Well, if you do the cross yellow times yellow, so now we know what that means, that, sorry, thought I had my highlighter. Each parent um, can donate a Y and A, right? So let's follow that. A Y and A, A Y and A, and let's just fill in the boxes. So we get one homozygous dominant. We get two that are heterozygotes for A Y and A. And we get one that's capital A, capital A. So this one looks a goody. As you can tell, this one and this one look yellow. And what's up with the other one? Well, it turns out this little um, cross through it means that these type of organisms, while they can be conceived, they die before they even implant. I mean, it's you never will see them amongst the offspring even being born. So since they never come into being, it's almost like... <laughs>